Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Notwithstanding the logistics support that will be coming from Governor Yeson Wike of River State to the Labour Party, the campaign organization, the Labour Party, seems to be on the radar of critics who constantly point accusing fingers to the party's lack of manifesto ahead of the 2023 election in Nigeria and the display of social media attacks by groups called obedience in the face of any negative comment on their presidential candidate, Mr. Peter Obi. It will be recalled that the current sitting governor of Anambra State, Professor Charles Soludo, spoke openly against Peter Obi's presidential ambition I was not spared by obedience. As Nigerians gladly look to, forward to Sunday's third series of Arise News presidential town hall in Abuja, the ruling All Progressives Congress have vowed not to have any part of the event except a manifesto of the Labour Party surfaces. Joining us now from our Abuja studio as we look at the Labour Party and its campaign activities is Dixon Irebu, a member of the Labour Party and convener, Indigenous People of Nigeria, IPN. Good morning and welcome to the show, Dixon Irebu. Well, Dixon, good morning and good thank morning. you for joining thank us. Thank you for this opportunity. Yeah. First, uh, I mean, uh, Dr. earlier on we mentioned the Labour Party and Mr. Peter Obi doing the headlines. With regard to Chief Timmy Perceiver, who was campaigning uh, at a rally for Ashwa Jubala Metinungu in Bayesa yesterday, who said, your candidate, uh, Mr. Peter B, goes about saying that he's a frugal man, uh, that uh, he doesn't give shishi. And uh, Chief Siva said, no, governance is uh, it's not uh, just about prudence. It's not about uh, stinginess. It's about creating opportunities. And uh, Mr. Peter B is like that unproductive biblical servant who was given one talent by his master. Instead of turning it to two, he brought it back. He said he didn't want to waste his uh, uh, master's uh, money. Well, can you help contextualize this? Because people keep saying Peter Obi does not give money. He's a stingy man. He's a frugal man. And that was a big issue at the uh, APC campaign yesterday. What do you think? Um, thank you again for this opportunity. First, I must commend the show. They are doing a great job for this country. Both of you, particularly Dr. Ruben Abati and uh, Rufai Useni, I celebrate both of you. The truth is that the P2B presidency is very clear now. And so we are not uh, unaware of the plots of the detractors. The plan to give a negative uh, tag on Peter Obi, all of it has failed. They planned to, for instance, make him an ethnic candidate. It turns out that he's not an ethnic candidate. They tried to colorize his uh, reaching out to different places as like churches and all of that as religious. And that also has been debunked. The aspect of not giving shishi uh, it simply means, if they don't understand it, what it means is that we don't buy votes. Peter Obi does not buy votes. He didn't emerge as a candidate of Labour Party by buying delegates. That's what he meant, or that's what he means. He's a prudent manager of resources, and he puts his money in the right places, not throwing money to buy people's conscience. Not where the people who have held Nigeria down, like the former governor of Bayelsa State there, uh, the uh, Honorable Minister for Petroleum, who's under his watch in Abuja, we have had series, and even up to now, uh, fuel, fuel, uh, scarcity, fuel scarcity and all of that across Nigeria. Instead of focusing on delivering, you know, on what they promised Nigerians, they are here again telling us all sorts of stories. Peter is not, Peter Obi is not stingy, and we all know that he's not stingy, but he clearly states that my conscience is focused on wanting to come and serve the Nigerian people. And I will not buy this conscience. I will earn the people's trust. That is everything he is doing. If he was uh, like he attempted to um, ridicule, if not, uh, of course, he's himself he ridiculed, not the, part, not the, the word of God. That story of uh, those that were giving, with, uh, giving talents and the one that buried his. Clearly, this contradicts uh, this, the, 
uh, attempt to link it to P2B. P2B understands that Nigeria is in their need of a new direction. And when the party uh, that he has joined now, you understand, was actually at the back seat, he decided to step in. And he stepped in today. Labour Party is the envy of the two other political parties that have held Nigeria down for about 23 years. So it's, 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 uh, it's not surprising that the likes of them who have wasted the resources of Nigeria will begin to now vilify a man who has shown that prudence in governance is actually the way to build the people's uh, uh, or deliver uh, dividends of democracy to the people, and uh, rather than the other way around, where people who ought to be servants of the people now live in affluence and, uh, uh, and, and all sorts of it. So that's what it means. And we, 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 uh, we are not uh, afraid to say that we do not give money to buy your votes, but rather we put our money to ensure that these people, the Nigerian people, that they will live beyond where, where we are right now. Right, let's talk about accountability and written manifesto. Another thing the APC have said is that they would not have conversations, a debate with your presidential candidate if he does not produce a written manifesto. Now, the, your party has come out, especially your presidential candidate, to talk about the fact that you are currently working on a manifesto and you will produce it in due time. This due time seems to be dragging. Dixon, when should we expect, or perhaps dragon. the question how, should how be, how hold on, dragon. hold on a second, or perhaps the question should be, would we see a manifesto from your party, and if so, when? Yes, first question that you asked, yes, you will see manifesto from the party, from the candidate of the party. When the party candidate, my principal, decides when he will put that forward. And there is nowhere is written in the laws of the land that he has gone contrary to the Electoral Act or the Constitution of the land. It's not uh, the time you presented your Constitution that matters, uh, the, your, your manifesto that matters. It's actually about earning the people's trust. That thing you want to bring out as your manifesto, will the people buy into it? For instance, APC has brought out their so-called renewed hope. Where is the re renewed hope of what? They say they will come and continue from where the government of the day has stopped. Oh, they will continue with the poverty that has taken over the land. They will continue with the insecurity that has taken over the land. Is that what the uh, uh, clamor for manifesto is about? Unless they are waiting for a pit of B, who gives them direction mostly? If you, if you observe all through this period of this campaigning and all of that, who is setting the agenda? Who is engaging on the issues? Who is tackling those angles that has to do with the Nigerian people? Who is so, showing empathy to the issues that concerns the Nigerian people? It is Mr. Gregory Peter Obi, the candidate of the Labour Party. And when, for instance, you remember, the issue of flooding was ravaging everywhere, some parts of Nigeria, and including the government of the day, could not even utter one word. The candidate of the uh, ruling party could not utter one word about it. But what did Peter Obi do? He uh, uh, stopped his campaigns and ensured that he mobilized and indeed reached out to other Nigerians, including his opponents, calling their attention to the plights of the Nigerian people, that people are out there suffering and all of that, and we should not continue with the jamboree of campaigns and all of that. And he succeeded in bringing them on board, where they now started throwing money at issues that concerns the Nigerian people. It's not all about throwing money. It's not all about bringing out manifestos, but we are saying that the candidate of Labour Party is focused on earning the trust of the Nigerian people, just so that when he tenders his uh, uh, program for these Nigerian people, they will buy in into the vision and all of that. And that's the area of focus, really, for us. The challenge that the APC uh, uh, media team have thrown at uh, the uh, Labour Party team, well, <laughs> don't worry. What we want them to do is, please, Ensure that the candidate of your party is on ground to be part of that town hall. You are not the boss of the Nigerian people. You are aspiring to lead the Nigerian people. And you should be humble enough to come to the level of the Nigerian people where they would interrogate whatever vision you say you are presenting forward for them. Where they will interrogate you also from where you are coming from and all of that. Okay. Outside this, all the rest of what APC is doing is all bad or dash because clearly they know that they have failed the Nigerian people. They have failed this country woefully, and it's shameful 
If you consider the caliber of people in APC team that are campaigning for a candidate who clearly, clearly, by his track record and all of it, cannot stand the taste of the next phase of our country. We need a, 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 a president in, uh, in 2023 who will not just only be ready to work 24 hours, but 48 hours nonstop. Dixon. Does the APC candidate have such capacity? Dixon. Of course not. Let Dixon. him come on a royal uh, television Dixon, can you hear like me? my candidate has come over and over again Dixon. to be interrogated. Can, can you hear me? Yes, please. Good. Yes, please, I can hear you. Uh, I can uh, hear you. Dixon, let's set things in place. You can't walk 48 hours non-stop. It's almost not humanly possible. All right? Let's just say that for clarity's yes, sake. I may have exaggerated, Rufai. Uh, and secondly, it, secondly... It, it, I, I get that. Secondly, mm. the issue I have raised is a very big issue. And let me tell you why it's a big issue. It's an indictment on your candidate and on your Which? party. Hang on a minute. The issue of the manifesto. A lot of people claim that Peter will be although he's a politician, came from the PDP, they see him as a departure from what used to be the norm. And a lot of people are asking, three months to an election, we don't even have a manifesto. And he's been here many times, and he says, record me the things I say as manifesto. A lot of people tell you, we can't buy that. No. There must be a working document that is a contract with the people that people can interrogate. And I think right here speaking, I'd even made reference to something called the Magna Carta. That was the beginning of the Bill of Rights. You know, the barons and the king of England. So the Magnifesto is sort of like the Magna Carta between the politicians and the people. And we want to see that contract of agreement, which is the Manifesto. And a lot of people want to see a date to it. That's one. Number two, internal problems in your party. Ogo states, they said they had, you know, suspended, I don't even know the word they use now these days, or expelled Mr. Donyo Kupe in the States. And we've had many instances like that in your party. What is really going on? Thank you, Rafai. First, I start off with emphasizing again that the manifesto of the Labour Party candidate will be made available, and he is the only when? one that will make it available, and he when? will make it available. We had that about a month okay. ago. Asking when? Asking when is like attempting... No, uh, no, no, asking me when would be like saying preempt your principal. I cannot do that. I'm not in that capacity to preempt him. He is a man who is committed to what he has made up his mind about for about Nigeria, which is that to take this country away from consumption consum consumption to, consumption to production and if that is not a summary and not a good summary enough for what he wants to come and do i don't know i don't know what else is should we go for renewed hope i don't know what that what that would mean should we go for uh, the manifesto of so called uniting nigeria i don't know what that but means but at least you we can see those nigeria manifestos by decree. so the point i'm making the, 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 no, no, yes we have we, we know them we know the two see Beyond manifesto, I want us to please look at this thing thoroughly. Who has really reeled out programs, documented, provable programs? Who has really reeled out what he is coming to do for Nigeria and the Nigerian people amongst all the candidates? Beyond the very well, uh, well uh, 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 organized uh, paper put together in a glossy format and all of that. But I said here that he will definitely present his manifesto to the Nigerian people. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited also that Nigerians are yearning earnestly to see this manifesto because they can't wait. Because we know also what it will look like. It will be that really the new vista towards actualizing the greatness of the giant of Africa. That's why Nigerians are expectant. And I am excited also that even the opposition are also excited to want to pry into what the manifesto of the Labour Party candidate, you know, will be like. We are excited, excited about that and we reassured the Nigerian people that that will be available. About the internal squabbles in the party, you see, Clearly, we, we are all part of this country, for goodness sake. Where was Labour Party before now, a few months ago? And then now, so the interest that politicians are now showing in the Labour Party excites personally someone like me. If there were any squabbles within uh, the party, you would think, uh, what's going on here? It's a political party, not a religious home. 
It's not, uh, 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 it's, it's expected that politicians will want to throw, you know, whatever they may want to, just to get that relevance and all of that. So, but I can assure you that if there's any political party that is well focused on delivering, that, delivering Nigerians out of this quagmire that we found ourselves, is the Labour Party. The candidate of the party is well focused and not distracted in any way from what he is coming to do for the Nigerian uh, nation and all of that. I think sincerely that compared to what the other political parties are going through, Labour Party has no, no problem at all within, uh, within the party. The aspect of, uh, uh, say, suspend or uh, expel the uh, able and uh, very well qualified and <laughs> able leader of the obedient movement as the DG of the campaign organization uh, it's, it's all badadash. Okay, now wait. The crisis within the party, uh, Julius Abure, the chairman of the party, has been quoted in the papers today as saying that it's fake news. But Arabambi, the uh, national secretary of the party, the national policy secretary of the party, is saying whoever is not happy with the news about the crisis in the Ogun State uh, you know, a uh, branch of the Labour Party should go to court. So are you saying that what has been reported, that Dr. Donyo Kupe has been expelled by a faction, let me use that word advisedly, <laughs> of the Labour Party in Ogun State, you know, is, uh, is fake news. Although Abure made the point that the, a faction of the party cannot dismiss Donyo Kupe as... Uh, as uh, you know, director general of the campaign. But the issue they are raising is that he has not been paying membership uh, uh, dues. You are also aware that in Lagos, <laughs> there are also factions within the party. And that matter has also not been resolved. Up to a point now that, you know, there is uh, controversy over who is an uh, authentic uh, candidate or not authentic candidate. Does your party have the inter an internal mechanism for resolving Conflicts. And it's not just about who is a member and who is not a member. There have also been stories here and there about people mismanaging funds. So do you have that internal mechanism? Because, I mean, Mr. Peter B wants to change things in Nigeria. He wants to create a new dawn. Uh, but the party, you know, the members are beginning to behave like the members of the same parties that you want to displace. <laughs> No, uh, first of all... No, it's not funny. It's a serious all matter. The political parties are... First, I started off with saying that the narrative about expelling or suspending our DG is badadash, meaning it's nonsense. Even calling it fake news would be more like giving credence to it. It's, it, it doesn't exist. All right? And then the, the issue of how politicians behave. Labour Party is not claiming to have assembled people from heaven to become, to be members of the party. The members of Labour Party are also Nigerians. So that Nigerians who are in Labour Party are showcasing the characters that is known with uh, moments like this, which is politicking, it's not, it's not unexpected. What is important is, what is the candidate's focus? What is the party's focus? You asked about uh, internal mechanisms. Of course, there will be internal mechanisms. There are internal mechanisms to solve uh, uh, whatever internal issues there are in the party. And of course, those are going on. I'm not a spokesperson of the party. I'm not an ESCO member of the party. I am, in fact, beyond wanting to be identified as Labour Party member, an obedient a uh, committed member, a committed member of the obedient movement, is more appropriate to, uh, to, you know, to attach to my name. It's not about party, because the obedient movement is not even about Labour Party alone. Labour Party, yes, is the vehicle, but we have members of APC who are supporters of the obedient movement. We have members of PDP who are supporters of the obedient movement. We have members of APGA and other political parties who are supporters of the obedient movement, because it's the people's movement. It's the Nigerian people's movement. This is our moment. This is our chance. We want to take back our country. So the squabbles within the party that is the vehicle, be rest assured, uh, Dr. Ruben about it, that it's not like the, uh, the PDP's uh, problem. It's not also like the APC's problem. It's simply about interest. People are, you know, getting involved and wanting to really indeed be shown to be part of this movement and that they are contributing their quota. 
Because indeed, it will be a new dawn in 2023. By the time this party succeeds in ousting these two parties that have held Nigeria down, that is the uh, PDAPC, as uh, the, new, as the uh, candidate of uh, the uh, APC candidate has formed, because he has exposed truly that APC and PDP are same same party. This oh, one held sway 16 years, Dixie, and this one Dixie. seven years plus now, Dixie, and Dixie. have wrecked the system, have right, destroyed Dixie. our country. We're almost out of time. Actually, we're out of time. But I just wanted you to speak to the obedient movement and the criticism around, just one word around that, the criticism around the fact that some people have accused them of being very, despite passionate, but sometimes very hard and intimidating, almost harassing those who speak against the principal, Peter Obi. What do you have to say about that? The obedient movement, as led by Peter Obi, is very civil, committed, passionate Nigerians who are not ready to spare anything that will stand in their way towards the victory of taking back their country. Whatever name they want to call us, they have a right to it, but we are focused on victory. That's what's important to us. And we will win. All right. Thank you. We've been speaking with Dick Sinuegbu, a member of the Labour Party and also founder of the Indigenous People of Nigeria. Thank you for speaking to us this morning on The Morning Show.